Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is James Hodgin. I'm the Solution Director for Allscripts in the Europe, Middle East and Africa region. And presenting with me today is Mike Chapman, uh, Program Manager in our Solutions team. So firstly, just a little background on Allscripts and uh, our interest in uh, open and uh, interoperability. So Allscripts is a global health healthcare IT provider, uh, and we currently operate in 15 different countries around the globe. The majority of our clients use our EHR products in acute hospital setting and in ambulatory settings. We've always recognized the importance of interoperability and sharing data between healthcare providers. And in 2011, we created the Open Business Unit uh, part of the Allscripts Corporation uh, with the objective of opening up our EPRs to clients and third parties for a more efficient data sharing process. This started with bespoke APIs on our Unity platform, uh, which was very successful. However, um, as we're all aware, in order for interoperability to really uh, progress, we all need to be using the same standards. And so in 2016, we released our first APIs using the FHIR standard, uh, therefore increasing our reach and repeatability uh, for data sharing capabilities. To date, we've recorded more than 8 billion data shares across our client base. So in terms of uh, the current landscape, obviously we are living through a global pandemic at the moment. Uh, and this has, again, put focus on the importance of data and how it can be and should be used to tackle this crisis. The diagram on the slide is a representation we'll all be familiar with. So it's the concept of a centralised data repository, which is fed by multiple systems, services and technologies. And then in turn, uh, all these uh, different contributors are able to take that data uh, back and use it when required. In many ways, though, this is still aspirational. Even though the technology exists, uh, many um, healthcare providers, uh, larger regional organisations, are still at the outset of a journey to actually achieve this architecture. But what if we could drastically reduce the amount of movement of data between these different systems and services. The quickest route between two points is actually to bring them together and put them in the same place. So to provide an underlying database in which all systems uh, can plug into. Another consideration also represented on this diagram is the tangible shift in where and how care is delivered. New models of care, the home hospital, and drive particularly with COVID to engage remotely with patients is having a massive impact. To address these challenges requires agility in, in terms of the technology, uh, which we as providers uh, supply, but also agility in terms of healthcare, healthcare services can operationally shift. These two key elements led us to look at the bimodal approach and how using open air in conjunction with our well-established solutions could really benefit our clients both current and future and help us articulate a vision uh, of future data use and uh, IT provision uh, across the healthcare economy. I'm now going to hand over to Mike who's going to talk through some of our experiences with bimodal to date. Over to you Mike. Thank you James. Good morning, everybody. Um, yeah, the um, organisation becoming aware of the Gartner model in uh, 2017, we started investigating um, the open EHR clinical architect concepts and the ways in which they could work with an existing EHR core. Um, so, as James has said, we already had the uh, basis within Sunrise of uh, uh, multiple interoperability tools. So this is a good candidate uh, of which to try out the, uh, the bimodal model. Um, now the Gartner model envisages uh, the, the framework that um, is here on this slide. 
um, of the core storage investment being owned and promoted by the local health economy. Um, and uh, for the pilots, we, we followed that model um, with the EHR um, interoperating with a Salford hosted um, open air instance uh, to which the ecosystem of apps uh, could connect. Um, so exploring that in, in the, the shape of that, um, using that structure, um, we worked on several pilot services, which are based on developments uh, using SME developers who are working with Salford Royal, uh, and they were supported in that by Rachel Dunscombe and her innovation team at Salford. Um, some of the examples were around um, specifically pain scores in one of the specialties um, and being able to take data held and recorded uh, in the EHR from patient consultations uh, at clinics um, and to provide patients with the ability to use mobile devices or a desktop to record their own pain scores when at home between clinic visits um, and using that data via a, uh, an app that was talking into clinical archetypes to then draw the data from both the secondary care environment and the patient's own recordings and be able to map them together to present the data overlaid um, to give a better picture for the um, teams to understand the, the patient's experience um, over time uh, when they weren't at the clinic. Um, regional re renal teams provide a regional service, um, but we're finding that uh, patients were presenting with problems at their local A&Es where the clinicians were not aware of the treatment cycle that um, a renal patient was under and at what stage of their treatment cycle they were in, uh, which meant that there were some uh, inappropriate referrals, emergency referrals being made, um, which could be managed differently. So in that case, the data and the um, observations that were being uh, made under the regional team's control were presented from the core system out into clinical archetype storage and then made available via apps talking to an open air environment um, to disseminate that information across, uh, frankly, any, any of the clinicians who needed to be able to see it. Um, now, therefore, we, we've, we've explored uh, those elements of the, um, the components. Um, could you sort of move the slide on, please? Um, and we've taken that a little further. So having uh, actually built those tests of change instances um, uh, on open air, we've also undertaken developments of, of major commercial offerings to supply bimodal approach solutions, um, drawing together um, core applications, more than one, um, but seeking to build that around an open air core uh, in the knowledge that uh, there was much yet to be done uh, for which um, the, uh, there, was, there was no clear story. So using that Gartner bimodal model, the design was to future-proof developments for a whole region or sub-national services, um, where at the stage of investment, not much more than the first steps of new services delivery could be accurately defined. So it's about providing flexibility. However, our experience has been that these have not been taken forward as the design preferences. And referring here to this table uh, from under, some work undertaken for publication in the BMJ back in 2018, it picks on what we have observed that the technology to deliver the interoperability is a relatively low risk item when considered against concerns about standards, about the legal position on interoperation, and most significantly on the organizational challenges around capacity to accept change and the ability to absorb such changes. So despite 
technical system suppliers willingness to engage, we have observed an inherent conservatism and the perception around a risky choice, which seems to be preventing real progress. Lovely to you, James. Thank you, Mike. And just to wrap up, um, a discussion point which we uh, would like to table uh, here is, will healthcare providers be persuaded to commit to and operate an open EHR clinical archetype based store as the central model for their patient records? Over to the Q&A. Thank you. <laughs> 